This is Asia and Espy, and welcome to our Cap Ed Makes a Podcast. How are you, Espy? I'm doing well. How are you today, Asia? I'm good, thank you. Bundled up and warm at home, because this is how we're doing them now. Yes, and it's also kind of snowing a little bit here and there in certain areas, so. I know, I like it. Little flurries, it's kind of nice to see the, the paw prints in the snow, but like it's not so deep that you actually have to get out and shovel anything. It's a, it's a good mix, I like that. Yeah. Oh goodness, so I noticed that CapEd hit a major goal and I'm really excited to share it with our listeners. And that goal is that our Get Give program hit $200,000. So that is so super exciting. So I wanted to talk about that for a minute. I assume that you heard also that we're at the 200,000. I did, that is so exciting. We were hoping to hit it by the end of the year, which goal has been achieved. We have a couple more weeks, so let's add more to it. But it's so exciting. Yeah, it really is. And I love the program in and of itself and to be able to help all of the schools and the individuals, um, which is actually, and we've mentioned this before, but the 200,000 actually equates to 400,000 because for each of the $100 that goes to the local schools, $100 is also given to our members. So that's a lot of money in people's pockets and then back to the schools. So I'm just really excited that we hit such an amazing benchmark. I am too. It's super exciting. I mean, we know one, members are actually using their accounts and they're using them to meet those qualifications to be able to be a part of the Get Give. Um, so if, just to share for those that don't remember, this is a part of our high yield checking account and qualifications do have to be met in order to get the 100 and give 100. And they're super duper easy to meet, um, which is 12 debit card transactions posted by the end of the month or the qualification cycle. A debit, uh, sorry, ACH or direct deposit and e-statements, which everybody should be signed up for because who doesn't like receiving the cap at emails telling you how much you've spent, how often you've used your debit card. It's kind of eye-opening and scary, but I really look forward to those emails too. I do too. It is really nice to be able to get that email and say, this was what you did. And yes, you met your qualifications. They're very simple to meet. Even my young adult children meet them they don't even realize that they are meeting them they just are naturally doing what they need to do and they've signed up for their e-statements and have their direct deposit and use their debit card 12 times and boom there they met it so um really exciting that is a very cool milestone and i'm really happy to uh, have been able to share that we met it early so that's just really really neat also this month we have the read to rise campaign that is up and running am i right yes i personally love the read to rise program it looks a little bit different this year uh, because in the years past we were able to go into the schools and read with the children and just really participate hands-on um so that looks so We're not able to do that, but that's okay. We are still in contact with all of the schools. And so essentially our Read to Rise program is our CapEd's reading program where the schools, elementary schools sign up with our local app. There's a local Read to Rise um, app that is tracked electronically for minutes read. And the winning schools, so there's going to be five winning schools that place um, with all of their accumulated minutes to um, sorry to be able to place um, first through fifth and so those schools this year for the 2021 year will be able to receive a monetary prize and so that's the first time that we've done that 
which is really exciting for the school. CapEd wants to be able to support them as well as reward the children with the balloon that comes out in the fall or spring for those winning schools. And so the top schools for this year for the 2021 will receive $800 in a cash prize. So that's really exciting. And then the second through the fifth place schools will each receive $300 uh, to be eligible to win those awards the school does have to have at least 10 percent of their school's population signed up but that's super easy the parents go into the app they use our code they sign their child up and just maybe even once a week they don't have to do it every single time if they just keep a running tally of the minutes that their children have read they just go in plug it in and it keeps track of it. And it's a really cool countdown. The child can receive badges like um, an electronic award within their profile. So that's new this year too. So that's a really cool thing to keep the child on track so that they can see, you know, oh, I've hit 50 minutes. Oh, I've hit a hundred minutes. And then they unlock this really cool little badge. It's just something fun for them to be able to see. So that started on December 1st and it runs through April 1st. And so any local accredited elementary school is um, eligible and it's free for the school. It's free for the parents and it's just a really fun, easy way to keep track of their reading progress and then to be rewarded at the end. So we love to participate in that. It's a really cool program. That's so awesome. I think it's awesome that we're also adding the monetary prize to it for the schools. So not only are kiddos seeing these awesome little stickers that they're getting, but they're also reading and helping their school and helping you know, get more books or be able to assist other children in other ways with the cash prize. So that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's such a great group effort. It's not just one child doing all the work. It's everybody working together as a team. And even though they can't be in person, they can know that they're that their friends within that school are also reading along. And so, you know, everybody's minutes in that school combined will be able to benefit the entire school as a total. So I really love that there's that kind of teamwork vibe happening as well. All right, Espy. Also, I did want to mention one little thing regarding the Read to Rise for any parents that want to check it out or schools or if, um, librarians want to get some more information or any staff. It's super easy. Just go hop on to capedcu.com slash read and that entire page will pull up. There's also a detailed flyer link. You guys can go in and check it out. And I hope that you guys will go look at it and let us know if you have any questions regarding the program. Yes, let's get that participation up. Let's get those students signed up and let's see what school gets first prize, first through fifth prize. Yes, I'm excited to be able to track the leaderboard and see what schools are in first place. So, yep, go check that out, capedcu.com slash read. All right, well, welcome back to CapEd Does a Podcast. This is Asia and Espy. Hi, Espy. Hi. I am really excited to introduce a couple people that we have with us from Idaho Public TV. Not everybody is aware, but CapEd is a sponsor of PBS Kids Programming, which I personally love. There are so many resources. And today we have Carrie Wardle, who is the educational manager with Idaho Public TV. And we also have Florina Ruvio, who is a family education specialist. And so welcome, you guys. Welcome to our podcast. Hi, Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm really excited to hear about some of the resources that you guys have. I know that there are lots of things that you guys have for distance learning. Um, there's the Classroom Idaho. So I will let you guys take it because I am really excited to hear more about it. We strive to really support lifelong learning at Idaho Public Television. And we do that really by trying to support the entire learning ecosystem. So we think of that as kind of everybody that surrounds the child. And so we really try to um, support families, communities, and educators. And so um, we're excited to be here talking about that. Florina is going to talk about the great resources that we have for families. And then, and then I'll talk about teachers. I think 
you know, people just often think of PBS as PBS Kids, which it is, and that's wonderful, but we have um, so many more resources beyond just PBS Kids that are available, especially in these kind of uncertain times with, you know, um, distance learning and uh, kids are home more from school. So we're really excited to be able to share those resources. So um, Florina, go for it. All right. So um, for parents, I think a good place to begin is PBS for parents, uh, which can be found at pbs.org forward slash parents. Um, it's, a, it's a great resource because it has a, a variety of different things. There are um, apps, shows, there are activity sheets, uh, crafts, all sorts of good information. And it's designed with some of our characters in mind. So you can choose uh, activities based on character or based on the age of your child. Um, there's everything from science, math, to social emotional learning. So it really is a whole wealth of resources. And if you look at the very top uh, of the website, it will um, talk, it will state, you know, find tips and activities to help you play and learn at home. And so if you find all of that link, it takes you to learn at home uh, with PBS Kids. And there you'll find even more information about some things that you can help to uh, help your child learn at home. So again, uh, lots of games, activities, there's articles for parents about how to talk to children about emotions or how to, to uh, encourage your child's curiosity about science and math, you know, all sorts of um, fun things that, that we have available. And again, uh, that you can find by age or by topic. So uh, there's a lot of different things there. And then we also have, apart from the PBS for parents and the Learn at Home, uh, for people who may not have access to internet, we have Bright by Text, uh, which is a service that we provide. If you text Idaho Family, all capital letters. Uh, so Idaho Family, all together, all capital letters, uh, to 27. 4448, you will um, receive a text and it, you just follow the link and sign up with your information uh, based on like your child's age. It'll ask a few different questions, you know, like how many children, age, things of that nature, and then based at, on like your location as well. And then based on that information, you get um, texts on a on a pretty regular basis about things that apply to your family so it could be anything from like you know at, as an as an infant you know this is these are the development stages for your infant or here's how to talk to a three-year-old about tantrums or um, local resources that are available whether that's local food banks or a health clinic or uh, any kind of free activity that might be available in your area. Uh, so we have quite a few things for parents, even though it, like Carrie stated, it, um, most people think of us for PBS for kids. Carrie? Florina, did you want to talk about um, Sesame Street and communities as well? Oh, yes, that's right. Sorry about that. Nope. We do also have Sesame Street and communities, which can be found at sesamestreetandcommunities.org. And this also has a wealth of information on different topics. And it's um, not just the normal, like, I mean, there's math and science and, and reading and arts, but they also cover tough topics like uh, trauma or incarceration, divorce. They handle a wide variety of topics that are, um, that Sesame Street does a great job of providing parents with um, trip, trip, tips and tricks. Uh, about how to talk to children about those big topics that kind of seem overwhelming, right? Uh, and there are also, uh, there's a, you can sign up as a parent and then it, again, you can filter for activities, uh, for apps, for games by age or the topic. Did I, did I get it all, Carrie? I think so, thank you. Um, you know, the great thing about all of the resources that Florina and I are going to share today is that they're free, right? And so um, as a public media company, we uh, we don't charge. There's no charge for any of this stuff. It's all just out there and available. So I'll talk um, about a couple of things that are available um, 
for both parents and teachers. Now, please know that this is the tip of the iceberg that we're talking about today. Um, PBS Kids, Idaho Public Television, we have a ton of resources. And so um, you're welcome to reach out to us via email or give us a call and, and let us know if there's other things that you're looking for. Um, we do have uh, on our website, uh, we have set up a distance learning page. So if you go to idahoptv.org forward slash distance learning, you'll find um, that it is broken up for resources um, by grade level. And these are not just necessarily resources for teach for parents. They're also, I'm sorry, for teachers. They're also for parents. What we did was just try to curate sort of in one spot, all of the really great resources that PBS has and that um, Idaho Public Television has that would be useful to, to you guys as parents and as teachers. Um, and so that's a great place to go if you're kind of not sure where to start uh, is to go there and take a look. And then, um, Another thing that I think, I, I hope people are getting more aware of um, is a project that we launched in response to the pandemic called Classroom Idaho. And I'll, I'll tell you that this is one project that I um, am pretty proud to be a part of. So of course, you know, in March as schools shut down, um, I'm, I come from a rural community myself. I taught for 10 years in a rural, rural community. And so my teacher heart, um, as soon as school shut down, I instantly went, oh my gosh, what are all of those kids with no internet going to do for, um, for there was all of these great distance learning resources on the internet, right? And I knew having come from a rural community myself that there's kids all over the state um, that didn't have internet access. And so we pitched this crazy idea to the um, leadership at the station. And I said, why don't we get teachers to teach uh, record themselves teaching and put it on on our broadcast channel because uh, as a public as a statewide public media company we reach 99% of the homes in Idaho with just an antenna. So uh, this crazy idea was born and we launched a, um, in April and it really is classroom teachers teaching lessons. Uh, we the fall session actually wraps up this week. Um, we're taking a break for Christmas and then we'll launch again in February. Uh, we have K through sixth grade and um, it's mostly just reading and math and, you know, an hour of content today. So it starts at eight o'clock with kindergarten and then runs an hour until sixth grade. And then we also partnered um, with the English Language Center in the Idaho Office for Refugees and also brought to to families um, English language learning classes. And we paired together an adult English language teacher and a child English language teacher from elementary schools. And we had them come up with a lesson that again, an hour long lesson that could be for entire families. And so that those air right after um, the block of K through six. And so again, really proud of that. That's on our Learn channel. Um, so depending on the area where you're at, uh, it's on the 0.3 channel. So like in the Boise area, it's 4.3, but in other communities, um, it, you know, it varies. Um, we do have more information about that on our website as well. So if you're looking for more information and a schedule and things like that, that can all be found on our website. Um, and that, excuse me, that airs five days a week, Monday through Friday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I said, we're starting again February 1st and we'll run through the end of the school year. Uh, again, hoping to reach those kiddos who, you know, maybe don't have access or even I know parents are using it. Um, I've heard of parents using it as sort of supplemental content. So um, really excited about that one. <clears throat> and then um, if you haven't heard of PBS Learning Media, I mean, parents can use it. Uh, it's designed for teachers. And it is, there are thousands of free resources available. They're all aligned to standards, to content standards. If you sign up for an account, which is free and is single sign on with Google and um, you know other platforms as well, um, then it al aligns automatically to Idaho content standards. So every resource on there is aligned to content standards. Um, they also have supplemental materials and it's the, you know, PBS videos, PBS kids videos, and also stuff from PBS like Nova and Nature. Again, they have resources for pre-K through high school. You can search by content standard. You can search by 
subject area, um, grade level, all of those fun things. And then one thing that, that PBS um, started in response again to, to the COVID pandemic is a collection called Pre-K to 12 Resources for New School Routines. So by the way, this is pbslearningmedia.org. Um, and you'll see at the very top of that page, if you go there, uh, <clears throat> a blue link that says teaching in person or virtual, and then there's a link to click on. And this collection is a treasure trove. They're doing, they're releasing new ones every eight weeks, and it's a two month unit centered around some of the PBS kids shows. So this is amazing for distance learning because your kids could watch, the students could watch the show at home. And then there's actual activities that go with it to expand their learning. Um, so teachers can sign up or they're available on this website, but teachers can also sign up for an email to get a teacher planning kit. And again, it goes K through or pre K through 12. So it shows you exactly what's going to happen for that two weeks. Um, and then there's also these really cool things that would be great for parents as well called learn along bingo packets. And again, they, they give us new ones every um, every couple of weeks, but it is fun things like um, one of them is creating a musical instrument and it gives you all of the instructions for how to do that. And then there's various activities that your kids can do at home that um, really, again, go along with some of those PBS kids shows, but really expand the learning beyond just watching the TV show. So that's a really great resource if you um, if you haven't looked at that. And then the very last thing that I'll say, because again, I could probably um, talk for hours about all of the great resources that we have, but sort of the very last one that I would like to point out is just that if you didn't know, PBS Kids has a ton of really great apps. So there is a PBS Kids Games app, but in addition to those, there are just a, a wealth of apps um, and all of those apps are aligned to learning goals. They might be social emotional, they might be literacy, um, arts and creativity, but all of them are aligned to learning goals. And so if you go to, you know, the Google Play Store or the app, the Apple Store and look, you know, search for PBS um, and PBS Kids, there's a just a variety and a wealth of um, of games and resources that are available that are amazing to use in a classroom if you have access to that, but that are also really great for use at home. There's even some family ones. Um, there's Plum Landing and Play and Learn Science. And a lot of those have things like go on a nature walk and take pictures of all the brown things. And so it's really encouraging families to get together and spend time together, um, but also learn about things. So those are, um, you know, if I had to pick and share with you sort of the top however many resources, um, those would be them. But again, just, you know, we just do uh, a variety of things. Um, when we can be, we like to be out in the community as well, supporting events and, and going to events and things like that. But um, due to COVID, we're working on, you know, taking our stuff virtual and really reaching people where they're at. That is amazing. So many great resources that you guys have mentioned and presented. Um, I have been one of those that went on there and looked at all the resources and seriously, so many. Um, I do want to ask, and I know the answer, but I want to ask so that our listeners know, but these resources, are they offered in another language? Uh, yes, actually, the our distance learning page, we have both in English and in Spanish. Um, most of the PBS Kids apps, um, you can choose a different language, Sesame Street and Communities, the website itself, and all of the resources that come with it are available in a different language. So yes, um, the vast majority, now Classroom Idaho is not because that's a local um, thing that we're doing, but the vast majority of the resources that are available are available in Spanish as well. That's fantastic. I feel like that's definitely going to touch a lot of the community because um, there are quite a few parents that unfortunately only speak Spanish. And so having to navigate that world with remote learning is difficult. And I say that because I've helped a lot of my family members 
try to navigate this virtual learning, distance learning that we're doing, and the language barrier is a big one. So it's awesome to know that you do offer a lot of resources in Spanish for them. And also for the families that do not have internet, that was probably one of the biggest, I'd wanna say, I wouldn't say scares, but one of the biggest concerns for me was how many families don't have internet and what are they going to be able to do so knowing that you have that covered as well is amazing and i will say thank you for having that well you're welcome and we thank you one of the things that i sort of maybe didn't mention is that i mean we obviously have a regular pbs kids channel but we also which cap ed sponsor is a sponsor of we have the pbs kids 24 7 channel as well and so um while that is not to promote kids sitting in front of the TV 24 seven, right? The idea is that you have access to educational content and your children do um, any time of the day. And so, you know, it's not the eight to five. So you're home and you're cooking dinner or you're together. You can turn on the, the PBS Kids 24 seven channel and have access to that content um, just as, as you did during the day. So if you haven't, if you, by the way, if that channel doesn't automatically show up, you might have to rescan your TV, but um, that's the fifth, a fifth channel that we have um, added that is available. Again, also for people that's not, it doesn't have to be, you don't need internet access. It's just um, available over the air. And, you know, there's been recent studies done, um, multiple ones of them, but one specifically that I thought of that I can remember that um, I love to reference is that uh, there was a study that kids who watched PBS Kids and played the you know games and participated in the apps were just as prepared for kindergarten and for school as kids who attended a high quality preschool. So there's value in PBS Kids um, shows. And, and I was recently in a meeting with the folks at PBS who said, you know, we never just have someone come and pitch a show to us and be like, yay, this sounds like a fun show. Let's put it on. We always start with the goal, the learning goal, and then we design a show around that. And we find people who can design shows to um, to meet the, the goals and the emotion, the learning needs. And I thought that was just such an amazing um, way to approach that. So it's very intentional, the shows that are on PBS Kids, and we try to be equally as intentional locally as well. So. Yeah, we I love, love that. that. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Espy. Thank you. You know, I personally, and I know CAPED does as well, um, and the community has such deep appreciation for PBS Kids and the free resources and the involvement and the effort that is put in to surround and support these families and educators and children. And um, we are really happy and grateful to be partners with you guys. And I mean, it's just super exciting to partner with people who are, you know, doing doing that great work. I personally have been on the apps and been on the site, and I just would like to encourage families, even the families that feel like, oh, you know, we're nailing this distance learning. We've got all of this down. And I just would really like to encourage anyone and everyone who has children and not even just children because the resources for adults and documentaries and everything is just really amazing but when we're talking specifically about the educational resources that are on there there's so many things it's vast and it hits so many different levels of so many different things that one might not have even thought about and so all of the choices that are on there are so many there is something literally for everyone even even the preschool teacher that's at home with their own child even the elementary school teacher even maybe the retired grandmother that has you know been an educator there are so many things that one wouldn't have thought about that will just bring something new to the table for that family and so um, i just would encourage anyone and everyone to hop on, take a look around. And I love that you were saying that you now have um, the bright, the, the family text um, 
-hmm. availability. That is so great to have those little reminders um, that you don't have to then be online and looking that you just get a little reminder like, hey, this is what's age appropriate right now. Here's a nice fun little reminder to do. So what a great resource. I know that um, I think is new to you guys. So what a fun thing to be able to add for the families that you serve. It is, it yeah, is. we're just launching that and we're really excited uh, about that. Um, Florina, were you going to speak to that a little bit more? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say that I, I'm really excited to use it because it's statewide and so we can really tailor it to the areas. So um, I look forward to sharing resources that are available, especially in those smaller communities where it's um, they might have trouble getting the word out about something. So just informing families, you know, of the resources there in their very own community, I think will be so helpful uh, to the families everywhere. And we can send out reminders about community events and things like that as well. So we're really excited to um, to really launch that. It, it'll probably be kind of full force the first of the year. It's up now, but we're really going to you know be launching that sort of full force at the beginning of the year. So we're really excited about that as well. Well, I am really happy to have had you guys on today. We are super excited to be able to share all the information that you shared with our members and whoever wants to pop on and listen. We're excited to have that offering to them. So do you guys have anything else that you wanted to follow up or SB? Did you have anything else? The only other thing that I would have is being that lifelong learner, I absolutely loved it when you said that, Carrie, because we should be lifelong learners. And it's it's amazing that you have those resources for everybody from littlest itty bitty baby all the way up to adulthood where we still we still want to learn. We still should be doing research. So um, definitely encourage everybody to continue their learning path, whichever way that is, and use those resources that you guys have available. Yeah, agreed. I do love some PBS. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to have had you guys on today. We appreciate the time that you took. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. All yeah, right. Thank you. Bye, Carrie. Bye, Florina. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you. Wow, SB, that one was so much fun to have Carrie and Florina on there. I love that they shared all of the resources that Idaho Public TV offers. So um, we are about done, and this was a really fun podcast. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? I do. So um, quick reminder to all of our members and guests that... We encourage you guys to please visit capitcu.com. Uh, one, because that's where you're going to find all of our great podcasts. You guys know you want to listen to those. Mm -hmm. But two, that is also where you will find branch information. Um, of course, with COVID, there is sometimes where we do have to close our lobbies and drive throughs are open. So for the most up to date information, please visit our website. Um, capitcu.com. You can click on the locations tab, which is on the upper right hand side and see what is open near you. It'll also give you ATM locations. So it's the most effective and easiest way for you to be able to get taken care of at one of our locations. That's a great reminder. Thank you for sharing that. It is starting to snow and so I hope that you and our members stay warm and stay safe. So thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Espy. Thank you, Asia. Bye-bye. Bye. information on our Get Give program and our commercial lending products and services, please check out our website at capedcu.com. Share accounts are insured by NCUA.